Once, he was an esteemed sailor, a successful merchant, who, by a twist of fate, was commissioned to embark on a campaign. He could have achieved greatness, but destiny's push turned him from a pirate hunter into a pirate himself. William Kidd, one of England's most notorious pirate captains, what led him down a path fraught with danger, yet thrilling adventures? Where lie the treasures he plundered from the Mughal Empire? And what mysteries are hidden behind the few surviving pieces of parchment? In the year 1699, after three years adrift at sea, Kidd grew weary of the pirate's life. Despite possessing treasures worth billions and renowned among the pirates of the Americas, this was not the life he desired. He longed for a peaceful existence and missed his wife in Manhattan. Enough was enough. At Boston's port, Kidd penned a letter to his then employer, the Earl of Bellamont, an Irish nobleman, hoping Bellamont would forgive his past and grant him and his sailors amnesty. In return, he promised Bellamont a substantial bribe of 400,000 pounds. Bellamont agreed to Kidd's terms, but upon Kidd and his crew's landing, they were immediately arrested. The cunning Bellamont had betrayed them. On February 16, 1700, Kidd was transported back to London as a major offender against the Crown. A year later, at the age of 56, Kidd was sentenced to hanging for piracy and murder. Kidd tried everything to plead his case, seeking an audience with Bellamont, but was repeatedly denied. Even attempts by his wife to intervene proved futile, leading Kidd to despair. In his final moments, he requested one last meeting with his wife, during which he secretly passed her a piece of parchment, whispering something into her ear. On May 23, 1701, Kidd and seven others were led to the gallows. As the noose was placed around his neck, Kidd shouted his innocence, offering to surrender all his plundered wealth, including the treasures of the Mughal Empire, in exchange for his life. The judge dismissed Kidd's plea. To set an example for other pirates, Kidd's tar-covered body was bound tightly to a post along the Thames River. His flesh quickly decayed, hastened by the pecking of seagulls, and before long, Kidd was reduced to nothing but a skeleton. Why did the British government harbor such animosity towards Kidd? What was the story behind the treasures of the Mughal Empire? And what secrets were revealed on the piece of parchment Kidd gave to his wife? Born in 1645 in the Scottish port city of Greenock, Kidd's early years were marked by his excellence as a sailor. With the onset of the Anglo-French War in 1689, Kidd, now a merchant, saw his country in trouble and valiantly enlisted. After the war, he married a wealthy widow and lived a peaceful life with his family in Manhattan. In 1695, during a business trip, Kidd met the newly appointed governor of New York, Bellamont. This encounter would change Kidd's life forever. At the time, the rampant piracy was a significant headache for the Royal Navy. To combat this, Bellamont proposed that nobles finance armed merchant ships to fight pirates and reclaim stolen goods. Impressed by Kidd's competence, Bellamont strongly encouraged him to take on the role of captain. Unable to resist Bellamont's persuasion, Kidd agreed to serve the authorities. In December 1696, Kidd, with 150 sailors, embarked on the adventure galley. The following nine months were plagued with misfortune. Not only did they fail to encounter any pirates, but 30 sailors also died from tropical diseases. Complaints of hardship abounded among the crew as provisions dwindled, and Kidd grew anxious, knowing the entire operation could collapse. To boost morale, he followed a sailor's suggestion and steered the ship towards the Red Sea. In 1697, Kidd made a decision he would regret for the rest of his life he ordered a red pirate flag to be raised atop the mast and attacked a fleet of Islamic pilgrims from Masha, eventually plundering a trade ship from Aden. Thus, the adventure galley, intended to hunt pirates, became a pirate ship in its own right. Soon after, during an operation, they mistakenly attacked a fleet belonging to the British East India Company, which was under the protection of the Royal Navy. The British government, upon hearing this, was furious and, after reprimanding Bellamont, declared that Captain Kidd would no longer be protected by the law. Realizing he had been abandoned by the government, 
Kidd was both heartbroken and resigned to his fate, ultimately embracing the pirate's path. On January 30, 1698, between Madagascar and the Malabar coast, Kidd and his crew attacked a fleet. As they boarded the vessel with ferocity, they were astounded by the sight of gleaming gold bars, exquisite pearls and rubies, and exotic jewelry. Upon inquiry, Kidd learned that the treasures belonged to the ruler of the Mughal Empire, Muhi al-Din Muhammad, commonly known as Aurangzeb. The cargo's worth was no less than one billion marks. During Aurangzeb's reign, the Mughal Empire expanded militarily into southern India, almost encompassing the entire South Asian subcontinent. The treasures aboard the ship, amassed from various conquests, were unexpectedly claimed by a pirate. Enraged, Aurangzeb threatened retaliation against the British government, placing immense pressure on the authorities. Consequently, exploiting Kidd's trust in Bellamont, the government decisively enticed and betrayed him. With the whereabouts of the Mughal Empire's treasures unknown, Kidd's every move prior to his death was closely monitored by the government, and the piece of parchment he handed to his wife was immediately confiscated. Upon inspection, it bore four sets of numbers. 44, 10, 66, 18. What was the significance of these numbers? The government quickly consulted cryptographers for decryption, and soon they had an answer. The coordinates suggested 44 degrees 10 minutes west, 66 degrees 18 minutes north, led the British government to a small island near New York named Gardner's Island. Investigations confirmed that Kidd had indeed visited the island before his capture, and before leaving, he had visited the island's owner, John Gardner, to whom he entrusted a chest weighing 52 pounds of gold, along with some silk and gems. Gardner claimed Kidd asked him to deliver 11 bags of gold and silver to Bellamont in hopes of securing a pardon. He also stated he was unaware of the treasure's location, but noted that in the days before Kidd's departure, several rowboats were busy moving barrels, chests, and bags to and from the island. Could it be that Kidd had indeed hidden his treasure there? The government's efforts to dig up Gardner's land yielded nothing. Years later, a marble slab inscribed with the message Kid, five inches east, two inches deep, was discovered on a small island in the Bay of Fundy, mired in mud. This discovery quickly spread, prompting an expedition team to drain the surrounding sea with tunnels. Yet they found nothing. Was the sequence of numbers just a decoy used by Kid? And where was the real treasure map? Over 200 years passed, and Kid's treasure remained an enigma fueling the fantasies of many treasure hunters who dreamed of divine favor one day. In 1932, an English lawyer named Hubert Palmer became one of the fortunate few. His adventures with Kidd's treasure were meticulously documented in the secret archives of the British Admiralty. Palmer, fascinated by pirates, roamed the streets and alleys of Eastbourne, a small port town in England. One day, he found a peculiar old sea chest bound with iron hoops in a second-hand store and decided to purchase it. Upon opening the chest, Palmer discovered a plank of wood and, hidden beneath it, a piece of parchment with a map of a small island, detailing bays, coral reefs, and marks for trees with precise steps for navigation. The most intriguing part was a line on the edge of the parchment. To find my treasure, one must follow this path. Captain Kidd, 1696. Palmer was astounded, wondering if the chest's previous owner was the Captain Kidd himself, and if the map indicated the location of the Mughal Empire's priceless treasures. Thinking of Captain Kidd's story and the legends of his treasure, Palmer was wildly excited. However, the parchment provided no information about the island's nationality, region, or which waters it was located in, leaving Palmer puzzled. For over a year, he spent nearly every day in libraries, archives, and antique shops, poring over ancient maps without finding any sea that matched the one described. Where exactly was the island marked on the parchment? Could Kid's treasure ever see the light of day again? In the summer of 1933, Palmer shifted his focus from studying the parchment to examining the relics of Captain Kidd, 
convinced that there were still undiscovered clues within them. Perhaps it was his sincerity that moved the heavens, for by chance, Palmer acquired a slant-top desk previously owned by Kidd from an antique dealer. Upon carefully inspecting the desk, he found a section sealed with pine twigs and pitch. Carefully digging it out with a knife, Palmer revealed a hidden compartment containing a small piece of parchment. His breath quickened as he tried to control his excitement, gently unfolding it. Indeed, it was another treasure map with the outline of the island, coral reefs, and markers identical to the previous one, yet still no name for the island. After meticulous observation, Palmer finally found a valuable clue, a few extra letters faintly spelling out South China Sea. Palmer knew that the South and East China Seas had once been favored hunting grounds for pirates, where Kidd's fleet had attacked many merchant ships. These vessels carried not only expensive silk and rare timber, but also a vast amount of jewels and jewelry. Following this lead, it seemed likely that the Mughal Empire's treasures were hidden among the numerous islands between Japan and Taiwan. Getting closer to solving the mystery thrilled Palmer, but which island among the more than 1,000 in the South and East China Seas could be the one where Captain Kidd hid his treasure? Finding the treasure still seemed like searching for a needle in a haystack. That same year, Palmer acquired a wooden chest used by Kidd, with the Kidd couple's names clearly visible on the top. With his previous experiences, Palmer quickly found another piece of parchment in a hidden compartment of the drawer, also depicting a treasure map. Unlike the previous ones, this map not only outlined the mysterious island, but also marked specific coordinates. These continuous significant discoveries left Palmer sleepless. To locate this mysterious island, he traveled alone to the British Museum in London. In the cartography section, Palmer pored over hundreds of maritime maps, comparing them to his three treasure maps. Palmer's unusual behavior aroused suspicion among the museum staff, who thought he might be a spy and reported him to the Admiralty. Faced with the inquiry from officers, Palmer had no choice but to disclose the entire affair. The Admiralty was astounded. They summoned treasure hunting experts to meticulously verify the authenticity of the three pieces of parchment, and the results confirmed that these treasure maps indeed originated from Captain Kidd. The Admiralty quickly reported the matter to the British government, which, astounded by the findings, approached Palmer. They offered him a treasure hunting ship and the necessary assistance, under the condition that all of the treasure be surrendered to the British government. Palmer was infuriated by the demand. He couldn't hand over the fruits of his labor so easily. After refusing the government's offer, he decided to search for the treasure with a friend who was an experienced sailor. However, fate played a cruel trick on the determined man. Just as Palmer was actively preparing for the journey, he was struck down by a sudden illness that took his life. Captain Kidd's treasure was once again shrouded in mystery. But with three treasure maps and so many valuable clues, would people be content to let the treasure remain hidden forever? More than 20 years after Palmer's death, a shipbuilder named Bronley purchased Kidd's treasure maps for 5,000 pounds from Palmer's housekeeper and sole heir, Elizabeth Dick. In 1951, after careful preparation, Bronley and a team of 12 explorers from five countries embarked on their journey. They set sail from the southern English port city of Gosport aboard a schooner named Ramona, planning to cross 11,000 nautical miles to reach their destination in the South China Sea. Yet, the Mughal Empire's treasure seemed cursed. Shortly after setting out, they encountered a severe hurricane that destroyed the foremast and cockpit. The group drifted in the storms of the British seas for four days. Fortunately, they were eventually rescued by a supply ship from the English fleet. But once again, the hopeful treasure hunt came to an inconclusive end. The life of William Kidd is a page of history soaked in grandeur and tragedy. Once a patriot, he was forced by circumstances to become a despised pirate captain. From loyalty to villainy, Kidd made a reluctant turnaround. From angel to devil, he paid the price of his downfall with his life. To this day, the tale of Kidd's transformation from a wealthy merchant 
to a pirate drifts along the Malabar coast, with the Mughal Empire's treasure continuing to lure countless explorers. Many pirates, having buried their treasures, were either captured or killed in battle, leaving endless opportunities for treasure hunters. The desire for wealth and pleasure makes them overlook the dangers ahead, embarking time and again on expeditions, trading time and life for a journey filled with legend.